Hello everybody and welcome back to WoW Classic. We are in Benethil Harbor today in the wetlands. And we're going to be starting off here and working in the wetlands for a while to complete a bunch of these quests that we have. We're going to start with Claws from the Deep. So we have to kill 12 Bluegill Murlocs and Gobbler. And they're right outside the town here, I believe. Murlocs are crawling out from the deep waters and building their villages on the coastline. They are harassing our fishers and merchants and must be stopped. One of these murlocs, Gobbler, skulks with the other bluegill murlocs and harries merchants along the road, always then retreating to the safety of the nearby murloc hovels. Our merchants are in jeopardy and we will pay to secure them. And then we're also looking for young crocolis skins for the local tanner and those are going to be around uh, the area right here outside of town. We have to find the Green Warden. You've heard of the Green Warden? You're not looking for him, are you? Well, I say you're crazy if you are, but who am I to keep a fool from his death? If you are seeking that beast, then I hear he is in the marsh east of the road where it forks to Dunmortar. He's lurking there among the crocs, and worse. And leave your money here, you won't need it where you're going. And you don't want to chip old Greeny's tooth on your gold when he bites you in half. Uh, and he's gonna be out somewhere amongst the intersection of roads way over to the east. This is a pretty massive zone And I'd like to say there's a lot going on throughout it, but there really isn't It isn't my favorite place to quest, but um, we do need to do quest here and see what it has to offer All right. Well, that's a good sign. Here's gobbler right away. Level 22 shouldn't be too much of a problem for us. And then we just need um, 12 Murlocs killed. So let's take care of that. Now these guys are probably going to run early and often. And I'm just hoping there aren't any that can heal themselves. I don't know if murlocs actually drop cloth. I don't know if I've ever seen them drop any cloth. We have uh, quite a bit of, of wool amassed. I did a little bit of grinding for wool. You'll see we're almost level 23. I need to get closer. Uh, some of that I got was linen. We, we've been able to sell some greens and some stacks of linen on the auction house. Fortunately, we're up to 18 gold. I tried finding another group for a Deadmines run just to complete the quest that we now have to take care of Van Cleef, and there wasn't anybody on who wanted to do Deadmines, and I looked for quite a while. I might try later on tonight, uh, maybe more of a peak time, but sometimes it's really hard to find a group for questing. You know what did happen though, is I had two people message me and offer to power run me through the dungeon. Like, max level characters with awesome gear, probably, I'm assuming, looking to make some tip gold. 
uh, offered to run me through, which wasn't really the experience that I want at all. So I didn't take them up on that offer either time. And uh, then I read an article that pretty much described that exact experience that I'd had. Um, apparently it's an experience not unique to me where sometimes on some servers the leveling zones are just basically empty and it becomes hard to find actual groups for group content. But you have all these people who are selling their services basically to power level people and to power run through dungeons and content and whatnot. Not really the classic experience that I thought we wanted, but... People really hate on the looking for group tool, you know, and they blame it for a lot of the social collapse of World of Warcraft. And yet, I, I'll go ahead and say that, you know, in absence of the looking for group tool, that core group of players hits 60, and now you have basically an economy springing up around power running people through content and that's kind of the opposite of what the content is supposed to be right it's supposed to be enjoyed by a group of at level adventurers um and, and conquered together and one thing the looking for group tool does is it facilitates that cross server um looking for players who want to do the same thing you want to do which is presumably not to be power run through content but to actually find at level people with whom you can group up and complete dungeons. So for whatever faults the looking for group tool has, it's too and far maybe away. whatever damage it's done to the to the sociology of WoW, you know, maybe maybe it's just equally as bad as what has happened in classic in, in its absence. I honestly feel like my experience with a pickup group found in general chat and a pickup group found in a looking for group tool, you know, that experience for me is basically going to be the same. I guess like the old argument is that when it's cross server, people don't care about their reputation on their server, so they're willing to act like an idiot. I'm going to go ahead and say that, you know, if someone is an idiot and wants to act like an idiot, they're going to act like an idiot no matter what. And in a world where there's classic and there's retail, I don't really know how much someone who is an idiot is going to care about their reputation on their server in WoW Classic in the first place. Especially in leveling dungeons. And it's not like it used to be, even if someone, you know, is an idiot. Is, is there anyone really paying that close of an attention to remember said people and to know, hey, this guy's an idiot, I grouped with him before. And what are we using to classify someone who is an idiot? Is it someone who doesn't play well? Is it someone who trolls in chat? Um, is it all of those things? Some combination thereof? I, I don't know. But I know that... The way I play, I'm basically going to treat people the same when they're in a pickup group, regardless of whether I found them and it took two hours of spamming in chat or it took 12 minutes of waiting in a queue. I'm, I'm going to act the same way. But maybe everyone is different. I don't know. Alright, that's 12 out of 12. Uh, let's go for a little bit of a hike now. Well, you know what we could do? While we head to the east, let's just go south of the road. And we'll see if we can find um, the crocolis, young crocolis we need to get skins for the tanner. Let's untrack that one. There we go. Now there are some over here, but there are many more to the east, so we won't spend a lot of time near town, but I do see this one over here. That's still recharging. Oh, 
Oh, we only need four. I wonder if that means the drop rate is going to be awful. Either way, I want to generally just be heading east, northeast. We're going to want to wind up somewhere around here looking for the Green Warden. Uh, and then we have a couple other things. But digging through the ooze we can do. The excavation site. I don't know where that is. That Oh, hello there. I'm not sure where the excavation site is. It might be to the southeast. Failed attempt. We haven't failed a, an attempt of skidding in a while. Hmm. Speaking of that, we're going to want to visit a skinning trainer soon who can teach us... This crocodile's running away. Who can teach us the next rank of the skinning profession. He's just still going. I hope he turns back around. Here he comes. Throwing a smite in here, you know, at the end of the rotation just is going to make it a little bit faster. We could wand him down without throwing the smite out, that's for sure, but we're fighting at level enemies, so it might be worth it to spend a little bit more mana, especially when we have a couple of uh, seconds between, between pulls here. God, this zone is so enormous. I mean, it's probably still only like half of the barons, but... It's probably one of the first places and maps you end up on where you really get a sense that the map is very large and you are very small and you don't traverse it very quickly at all. Not too worried about finding all these young crocolis because there are going to be some, I think, over where we end up. Oh, somebody in one of the comments on the on one of the recent episodes reminded me that we have talent points that we're not spending. I'm a <laughs> embarrassingly, I'm sitting on three talent points. That's at once. Terrible and awesome. Uh, I, I think we're just going to grab the rest of a powered shield here. And I think it would be foolish not to then grab two points in uh, improved powered fortitude. I'm just wondering like how much more I want to go into this tree. Or if I want to hop over into holy. Reducing the casting time, if we put 5 points in this, it'll be a half a second off of Smite, Holy Fire, Heal, and Greater Heal. That's like almost all the spells we use besides Mind Blast. And of course Shadow Word Pain, that's already instant. Holy Nova, not really too interested in that. A lot of strange talents. I think we just, yeah, we, we we grab two points in power word fortitude no matter what, so let's just do that for now. And I'd be interested to know what you guys think about what we do next. Having the extra 5% mana regeneration while casting, that could actually be clutch. But then where do I put two more points if I wanted to get down into the next tier, or would that be all that I did here? Getting the bonus armor would be good, but really only for questing, and then only sometimes. 
Reducing the cast time of mana burn? I don't even have that yet. Mental agility, yeah, reducing the cost of our instant cast spells, so what? Shadow Word Pain and Renew? By a total of 10%. The maximum mana, man, if you can get all the way down to Mental Strength, that would be really good, but it feels like... Getting down there might not yield too much for us, maybe there's a better path, I think. Alright, so we're going to want to be looking over here for the Green Warden. I guess we could just stay on the road unless we find a hapless young Wetlands Crocolisk. And then we'll take him out for his skins. hide okay yeah I'm surprised we're not getting some more medium leather actually now that I think about it with all those failed attempts and the fact that the skinning level is orange to us some orcs over here what's going on over here level 26 dragon maw raider uh, we don't want to mess with that nor do we need to right now Yeah, when there aren't people on to do quests, you have trouble finding groups for these elite quests when there's just nobody on in the zone. Let's see who's on in the wetlands right now. Uh, well, quite a few people are here now. I mean, and that is quite a few people. If you do slash who and you find 15 people on in the leveling zone you're in, that's a lot. Um, the way things usually are. Whereas if you, if you sign on during the early daytime, afternoon, or morning... You're not going to find anybody. Maybe that's just, just typical of when people are able to play. Alright, looking for the Green Warden. Hmm. I think maybe he's on this little islet here. We're probably going to start selling some of our stacks of light leather as well on the auction house. I don't think we're going to need a ton more of it for tailoring, although I could be totally raw off base. I'll hold off until I get the next round of tailoring recipes from the trainer, which might not be soon. We still have quite a few things that are yellow and orange that we could work through. Uh, we can make some bolts of woolen cloth, but I'm going to do that next time I'm in a major city, uh, i.e. Stormwind. So I can get whatever resources I need and, and hopefully visit the, the trainer there and learn some more things. Hopefully something that will be useful to us. We could use shoulders with stats on them or maybe a helm of some kind. A cloth helm maybe. Well this is where the road intersects. Oh, we did aggro this guy, so there's that. East of the road where it forks. So maybe over here, further south. It doesn't quite fork up here, it forks down there, so let's head south. We aggro this kind of lurking guy, a Fen Creeper. Yeah, he was... He was definitely creeping. Oh, he's level 25. 
Uh, we want to do that. It's actually like maybe we can use this ability we rarely ever use. Okay, now we're okay. Let's uh, take this guy out now. Level 25. Yeah, we don't uh, need that yet. Well, that's unfortunate. What's really unfortunate is that we are out of mana. Now might be a good time to drink, um, at least almost a full, or as much as we can off of a melon juice. Where are we? Uh, so maybe over here somewhere. I kind of remember that he was surrounded by strange looking flowers that almost looked like structures from, from a ways off. I think we're on the right track. We have all the Crocolis skins that we need, we don't need any more. East of the road where it forks. Well, um, hmm. I feel like the one time I found him, it was relatively straightforward and easy. Or maybe I just got incredibly lucky. We're pretty far east of the road where it forks at this point. Maybe it means up here. It forks in two different spots. This would be the way to Don El Gaz, but I mean technically so would this, it's the same road, but I'm pretty sure I'm just too far south. Let's check about right up here in this area. Maybe we can get there without uh, being hassled or harried too much by the local wildlife. It's always very hazy in the wetlands, I guess you might expect that. Uh, do we need these? I think these black ooze, we could have, we have a chance of finding Saida's bag. So this lady lost her bag. One of these black oozes has eaten it, and it's our job to defeat them and then sort through their goo to find her bag. And we could get this on the first enemy. We could have to fight 20 of these. It's going to be completely random. Well, it's not going to happen on the first one. Because why would it? But maybe they'll put enough in our path that we'll uh, find it before we get to the Green Warden. I guess it depends on how long it takes for us to find him. You know, I'm looking down here, and I think those are the flower-esque structures that tell me that he's right there nearby somewhere. Yeah, there he is. And he'll have at least one, maybe two quests for us. The Roots and Ferns speak well of you, small one. Although I have many names, I answer to only a few. But you may call me Rathiel. And you must hearken, for these lands weep from festered wounds. And I would charge you to heal them. Tramping paws. 
The mossite knolls have lived in the wetlands peacefully for many years, but now grow in numbers. Their feet stamp flat the fens, bushes, and flowers, and their foul axes cut too much wood to fuel their fires. They are no longer in balance with the land. For the wetlands to survive, the knolls must be reduced. Kill 15 mossite knolls and 10 mossite mongrels. Hunt them to the south, near the dwarven gate of Elgaz. 15 and 10. To the south, you say? We could do that. I'm trying to think if anything else is going to send us that far to the south. All the way down near Dun El Gaz. The oozes are going to be like predominantly over here. This is a fetch quest to Theramor. I don't know if we are even at level to do a lot in Theramore. You guys let me know what you think. It's a green quest. She'll start you on your Kalimdor adventure. Okay. I mean, that sounds great. If some of the quests there are also green, but I'm just not sure. I've only quested out of Theramore on one character, and it was the warrior. It was a long time ago, and I, and I feel like it took us to a, a pretty high level before we were able to do much of anything there, but maybe I'm completely wrong. I know on the Horde side you can go there around level 23 to 25 in, into Hillsbrad, but on the Alliance side, I mean, you'd think it would be comparable because of the PvP there, but I'm just not sure. I guess we would take a boat from Menethil to get there, right? Take a ship from here to the lovely port of Theramore, yeah. Okay. Oh, hello. Well, we'll just take care of you. Maybe I will do that and just kind of see if it leads into any quests that we can actually do in Theramore. That'd be great. I mean, I guess that would mean we had three zones that we could bounce between. Uh, Red Ridge, Wetlands, and Hillsbrad. That would be pretty awesome. I just don't know if that's the case. Truly don't. Alright, Dunal Gaz is this way. We have to make our way through all these spiders. When I see enemies out in the field like this, I'm just thinking like there must be a quest that has to do with these spiders. You know what I mean? Otherwise, why are they here? Because there's a lot of them, right? It's not just a couple of spiders. It's, it's quite a few and they're all the same type. They're just kind of in our way, actually. I'm weaving between them, but I, I wouldn't suggest this. Probably just clearing them would be better uh, for a lot of different reasons. And they are running some strange paths. We have some oozes. I, I don't know if these are the same ones. We'll fight a few of them and maybe we'll get really lucky. And the bag will drop, but I'm not counting on it. Alright, that's our cue to piss right off. Alright, now where are these gnolls at? We need 10 and 15. Aha, uh -huh, well. Yeah, there's one. There's a moss I know. There's mongrels. Oh, over there probably to the, at the camp. Okay, I remember this from the warlock. Alright. I'm going to take out this guy just because I'm curious if we can get lucky and find this bag while we're down here. I'd love to not have to go north to complete this quest. A flask of oil, not exactly what we're looking for. Pretty gruesome looking things for slimes, huh? A human skull or some kind of humanoid skull inside of them. Ugh. Well, oh, look at that. We have a broken pair of pants. Ugh. That's not good. It's not like we're carrying a spare pair of pants. I don't really know what I'm looking for, but that is going to affect some of our stats, which I'm not happy about.
I had every opportunity to repair those back in town and just completely neglected the glowing yellow thing in the corner by my mini-map that was telling me they were broken or breaking at some points. And now my OCD is thoroughly picked. Hey, at least they're dropping wool cloth. That makes me feel better. It's too bad we can't, like, stitch our pants back together, like, do some kind of repair since I believe we made these pants. Yeah, we made them. That'd be a cool thing for like a tailor or a blacksmith or somebody if you could just, if you had the ability to repair only the type of armor that you could make. So like we couldn't repair plate per se, but we sh we would be able to, to repair cloth. That would be really cool. And I don't see, I don't see why it wouldn't be the case if we had some basic materials. You know, you'd probably need a couple of pieces of materials. Oh, please don't pull everybody. Alright, we're gonna go back down to wanding a little bit more. We are going through a bit more mana. We've lost some stats in the pants, and by throwing in a smite, we're just getting lower and lower on mana. We may have to let... Well, while that's going, let's go ahead and double up Spirit Tap with a quick drink here and get back to full mana. Let's work along the outskirts of this camp and just kind of clear our way inward. I'm gonna keep grabbing these black slimes when I do see them. So yeah, we'll work our way along the outside and in, and we'll see... There's not a lot of mongrels over here, it doesn't look like. So, unfortunately, we may be looking for mongrels elsewhere. Time between attacks increased by 33%. Does that apply to our wand? That's a 5 minute debuff. That's pretty damn awful if it applies to our wand damage, and wand speed, rather. I can't do that yet. Resist. Yeah, I'd love to see some mongrels spread out over here. I, I guess we're going to have to find a separate mongrel-oriented, or mongrel-oriented, rather, camp. Let's let Inner Fire do some work. Save some mana. You'd think they would have some hiding behind the trees and whatnot over here, but I don't see anybody. Alright, we've got two, which is not really what we want. Let's just keep our cool. This one's a mongrel, so they even look, uh, they're a slightly different color. The gnolls are brown, and the mongrels are gray. So when we pull this, we're gonna get both these guys. Let's get our ma near our maximum range here. He resisted that frickin' smite. That was annoying.
getting low on mana. Uh, we have another disease, Spirit Decay, <laughs> reducing our spirit by 6. Awesome. Also very bad for us. Broken Pants, reduced spirits, and increased time between attacks. Uh, they have basically debuffed the hell out of us. No, this is a Knoll and he's gray. It's I guess it's totally random what colors they are. I thought they were kind of color-coded, but um, I don't know what I was looking at. Yeah, they're, they're a little different. Maybe their gear is what's different, I guess. He resisted. That was a huge and unfortunate resist. He resisted it again. It's too resist from this guy on Holy Fire. Like, I'm not even going to try to cast it again. We're just wasting all of our mana. What a jerk. He's very resilient. Let's say that. Finally starting to use some of our, our, our water here. Uh, these guys might be respawning quickly. I don't know. It looks like these are respawns. Either way, we're going to finish the Knolls long before we finish the Mongrel part of this quest, clearly. And we're probably going to have to fight through Mongrels, or for, through Knolls, wherever we go to get to the Mongrels. Let's go look over at these camps and see if they have a higher quantity of Mongrels to Knolls so that we can... Kind of balance things out here. Granted, we all, we need less mongrels, but still, we have three as opposed to twelve. That's pretty high disparity. We're going to skip around that guy if we can and investigate some of the camps over here. It looks like someone has just basically annihilated everything over here. Yeah, okay, great. Can we get this guy? Nope, we effed that up. Now we're on this mage's chain. This happened to us on the Warlock too. We got onto a mage's chain. They were, they were AoE pulling. They died or dropped aggro. Then everything ran to us. That was a craptastical day. And I'm really not interested in it happening again. Uh, and it's just weird to run into the same kind of behavior. Maybe this is just a known mage AoE grind spot because of the camps that are set up here. I don't know. Yeah, these are huge camps. Look at this. How the hell would I ever feel okay with pulling anything out of there? I'm not touching that. No, 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 no. Let's shoot this mongrel through the tree and be happy with that. Now, if he runs, we're screwed. Like, he basically can't get... Oh, yeah, go that way. Absolutely fine with that. Well, it's a little bit concerning because we seem to mainly be finding gnolls and the mongrels are deep in the camps or non-existent. Uh, take your pick. Carry. 
Well, we didn't find the bag we needed, but we found an eight slot bag. I can't carry yeah, I, I, I got it. God, do I know. I'm going to have to break down and use our cloth to, to make some bags. Um, that's just really all I can think to do. For now, we can uh, we have one eight slot bag. We can replace that there. That gives us two more slots. Hooray for that. Um, any more clams we could open up would be great. Oh, hi. Yeah, we needed you anyway, so hello there. That was probably the biggest mistake of your short spawned existence. Don't need any of these decomposing boots. Let's use that. That'll give us some more spirit, uh, which will defeat this decay. By what we'll get, we'll end up on a plus one because the decay is minus six. This is plus seven, so we'll end up positive one. 